Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. This is for StarCraft 2 Strategy, your number one location for step-by-step -step strategy and tutorial videos. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Terran strategy. This is going to be a mirror matchup or Terran vs. Terran strategy. And we're just going to be taking a look at how to execute this particular build. Um, but more importantly, in this strategy replay video, we're looking at how to alter what you're going for. How to alter your strategy mid-game depending on what your opponent is doing. Um, so in this particular strategy replay, the Terran opponent that we are going to be looking at, the Terran player we are going to be looking at is the Muslim, and our Terran opponent here is Nar Naruto, Nar Naruto, Naruto, something, Purple Terran. Um, so we're going to be going to the single player view, the single Terran player view, just looking at the Muslim. Uh, I did that in my last strategy replay video, and a lot of people liked it, so I'm going to try it for a little while longer, as long as there aren't, like, tons of outcries for going back, uh, then this might be the way we do it. It does kind of make sense to see what the player is seeing in the game, because it, it's going to mirror what you yourself would be seeing when executing the strategy, um, so that could help you out quite a bit when it comes to scouting information and, and just playing based off of what you see. Um, so, as you can see here, we are starting this game out by going for this proxy barracks. And in fact, what we're attempting to do in this particular strategy at the beginning of the game is going for um, two proxy barracks to try to get some fast marines um, out into our opponent's base. Uh, much like the strategy replay that I posted for that four barracks rush, um, the idea is to get a ton of marines in your opponent's base while they're attempting to tech up. Now, the problem is that if they see this and then if they prepare properly for it, it's not going to become effective. And at that point, we need to abort the strategy and move on to something different. Um, so as you can see, we have our first barracks up. We are coming out with a uh, Marine. Um, the second oh, barracks is building as well. Um, and in fact, we started building our first barracks at 8 Supply, um, and then we followed it up with a Supply Depot at 10 Supply. And our second barracks came up at about 12 or 13 supply. Um, so as you can see now, we're moving into our Terran opponent's base. And this is what you don't want to see. If you see them building a bunker, if they manage to get the bunker built, you're not going to be able to move forward with this strategy. Um, your Marines are just going to basically enter a firing line as they try to move up this ramp. And they don't do enough damage to the buildings to take down that bunker um, in any decent amount of time. So as long as our Terran opponent kept supporting with more units, there's no way you would bust through this front ramp. Um, so at that point, what we're going to do is go ahead and switch things up. Um, we are dropping down our two refineries right now. Uh, we moved into getting our orbital command as well. Uh, moving one of our barracks back to our base, we're actually going to use the second barracks that we built to go ahead and do some scouting. Uh, basically see what our opponent's doing and get a good idea of how we should prepare. We're doing this method as opposed to wasting a scan, because that scan energy we much rather use to to uh, pump down a mule um, and get that economic advantage as opposed to that visual advantage because again we are getting that scouting information with the barracks. In fact, barracks or factory scouting, um, both are used fairly often, uh, much better than a scan because you can get a full view of the base typically before they're able to kill it. Early on in the game they don't have anything that can do enough damage to it to take it down uh, in any decent amount of time. So as you can see in moving in what we see here is we see two barracks and a tech lab so it looks like our Terran opponent is going for that bio build. Um, we are going to be responding by getting up a factory and then getting up a starport and getting out some banshees. Uh, now of course we're going to be vulnerable in teching up like this uh, trying to go for this quick tech. We're going to be vulnerable from an early push. I mean, again, as you can see, he had a pretty sizable force. We'll go ahead and go to the everyone view real quick. He has a pretty sizable force right now, um, and we're definitely worried about an attack. Again, we saw that when we moved in with our scouting information. So we do need to get a bunker up. In fact, we're going to be getting two bunkers up right now and just getting a handful of marines to help fend off any early pressure that we're going to be seeing. Um, as you can see, our opponent does scan us, so he does see what's going on here. He also does see this uh, factory and the starport. He's going to respond in turn by getting an engineering bay to get some turrets up, as you can see there. And that's the likely response. We don't need to scout that. Um, if, you, if your opponent sees you're getting that starport, um, they know that you're probably going to be getting some banshees um, at this point in the game, especially if they're going for that bio ball. So getting that engineering bay is a likely response. Um, but as you can see here, we do have these two bunkers up. Again, we still have to worry about that early game push, especially if he masses up some forces. Um, he still could push through. So that's that's the purpose behind getting this frontal defense. Because if we just, after boarding our, uh, our proxy marine rush, if we had just 
gone straight to tech and not put up any defenses, we would be very susceptible to a counterattack. Um, so as you can see, what we're doing here is we finally got our starport up with our tech lab on it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start researching Cloak as well as getting these Banshees. Um, and this, again, that's that point I was talking about, that switch in tech. Now as you can see here, we do have a push from our Terran opponent. You may be wondering why he's moving up SCVs, um, trying to basically do as much damage as possible and provide as much of a distraction as possible. Um, to try to take us out because he does know we're teching up, he does know we're vulnerable at this point. In fact, up until the point that our first Banshee gets out, we're very vulnerable. They're just going to run rampant inside of our base. And again, this is a very dangerous position. The truth of the matter is, is that if he had had just a few more Marauders, he would have been able to do enough damage to take out the Starport before our first Banshee came out. Um, luckily, we did take out most of those Marauders in that frontal wall with those two bunkers there. Um, so our first Banshee does come out and we are able to push back that attack. Uh, now we do have, we lifted off our barracks again and moved it into his base. We're taking a look at what's going on. Uh, we do see the engineering bay is down and we do see this one turret, in fact the second turret building down over there. Um, so right now this tells us uh, while he is reasonably defended against the Banshee attack, we have a few vulnerable positions. We could strike from here and take out some of these supply depots out of the range of the turrets and we can also strike from this side, taking out this refinery, any of the workers right here and as well as these buildings. Um, so we are going to be moving forward with our Banshee Banshees here. Um, we have this starport here. We also have a starport down here producing Banshees. Um, and we're just going to try to do as much damage in here as possible. Cloak has just finished researching as well. Um, so we're definitely going to use that to our advantage outside of the missile turret range um, if Marines try to move forward to take out our Banshees. Basically just picking off the buildings, getting to anything that we can that's outside of turret range. Um, all the while we're going to be re reinforcing, um, getting additional Banshees out. Um, also just going to be working on our economy. In fact, I do think we start building a, there we go, we start building an additional command center to prepare to expand just in case this push doesn't work. As you can see, he had moved out his uh, Marines forward. We do cloak our Banshees. Unfortunately, that skin goes down, but he just doesn't have enough Marines to take out these Banshees. Um, good idea to try to target any turrets that are building as well as the worker that's attempting to build it. Um, take out any buildings on the fringe of his base outside of this range. Uh, and basically you can kind of box him into this small little area until he gets turrets up to, to repel this off. There isn't too much he's going to be able to do about it at this point. Going to be taking out this factory. Um, so now he's just left with this one barrack sitting here. Um, he's got a couple marauders. Obviously they aren't going to do anything versus these banshees. Um, at this point it's pretty much game over. There's not too much our Terran opponent can do goes ahead and calls good game and leaves. So yeah, uh, this has been a Terran vs. Terran strategy. I'll just go over real quick what we were looking at again. Uh, I am going to post the build order to this strategy, but the build order isn't so important because of the fact that we do that switch just a, a few minutes into the game. I need you to realize this. I don't want everyone building two proxy barracks and then lifting them off and moving them because you know, what's the point of building them if you don't plan on using them? The point is that we attempted a strategy, we attempted that early marine push, um, we saw that we weren't going to be able to successfully accomplish it, and then we switched into the Banshees. That is the whole point of this particular video. So we started off getting that proxy barracks at 8 supply, um, then we followed it up with a supply depot, of course, so we don't get supply blocked. Um, we produced some marines, we got a second proxy barracks as well. Um, now we had moved into our opponent's base with the scouting SCV and we saw that bunker being built here. We were unable to kill that SCV or stop that bunker from being built, so we aborted that marine rush. It was not going to be successful. We were just going to lose marines. There's no reason to dump more resources into it and try to go through with it. Lifting off one of our built barracks to, to, to do some scouting, that got us the vital information of seeing that there were two barracks with a tech lab and that he was going for that bio ball because we saw a few marines and marauders. Um, at that point, we wanted to put up these frontal defenses, and then we also went for that tech switch by getting this factory, getting the starport with the tech lab and getting those banshees. So again guys, this has been 4 StarCraft 2 Strategy. If you guys like our videos and you like what we're doing here, please do go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Keep watching and keep owning guys. So as you can see here, we're moving up into this uh, default ground mix for Protoss as well as that Colossus and exactly what I said was going to happen. Uh, we're using this cloak, cloak ability from our Banshees to take down that Colossus. Uh, the cloak detection from this Raven, uh, really close. In fact, we end up losing the Raven there. That, that was a huge blunder.